next paper is regarding the effect of microstructure constituents on the stat static and dynamic fracture behavior of high strength quenched and tempered martensite steels. Uh, the authors are Frank Teaggio, Matei Mazare, Maziare, Frank Yinga, Andrei Calter, Anna Anni Francois Lorenzo. Uh, yes, you? okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, my name is uh, Frank Chogem uh, Thiago, and um, I'm going to talk about the effect of uh, microstructure constituents on uh, fracture behavior of high strength, quenching temperate, matte, and tears. Uh, so I'm a PhD student at uh, Ecole des Mines of uh, Paris. And uh, following the next, uh, the previous presentation, I will come back to very uh, basic uh, applied fracture mechanics. So uh, I'm working on a medium carbon steel with uh, 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.4 percent weight, weight percent of uh, carbon. And this material is uh, largely used uh, in offshore domain for the manufacturing of um, offshore drilling parts. And uh, these parts have to combine uh, high strength with a good impact toughness in order to avoid a catastrophic failure during uh, in-service operation. And uh, the motivation of this study is uh, to contribute on the development of a microstructural based predictive tool of impact toughness so that we have to uh, link uh, microstructural characterization and uh, with uh, fracture properties and fracture analysis. We have to link uh, them together in order to develop uh, an accurate, as accurate as uh, possible model of uh, impact toughness. Representation uh, will be made in three points. Uh, the first uh, is about microstructure, the second, uh, tensile and fracture properties, and I'll finish by uh, some main conclusions. Uh, three microstructures were obtained uh, first by uh, quenched and tempering. Uh, uh, the first microstructure is named A, which is the reference. And uh, additional tempering were realized uh, respectively at uh, 690 degree and 720 degree. And they are uh, B and C. Uh, we can clearly observe there that uh, tempering uh, has led to a decrease of the uh, micro hardness. And uh, the, the, the main uh, uh, way uh, behind this uh, uh, tempering was to modify a uh, precipitation state of uh, microstructure. Here is a typical uh, temper mat inside microstructure uh, in which we can uh, clearly identify personal uh, grain and uh, mat inside laughed and uh, coarser and elongated carbide. So there are many carbides on uh, per matin side microstructure. So we have globally uh, matin side matrix and uh, carbide. So uh, we focus on uh, carbide characterization and by uh, doing, uh, realizing a carbon extractive replica in which um, transmission electron microscopes show that all carbide were cemented, cemented uh, tip. And uh, we also uh, applied uh, Voronoi algorithm on the replica micrograph in order to determine the intercarbide spacing. Uh, here are the distribution of uh, this intercarbide spacing in which we can observe that uh, there is a slight uh, difference between uh, A and B and the intercarbide spacing of uh, microstructure C is near of uh, 0 0.5 uh, micron. And uh, here we can observe that both uh, mean carbide size and mean intercarbide spacing increase with tempering uh, temperature. Next to that, we have realized, uh, we have analyzed Martin side matrix uh, by electron back uh, scattered diffraction. Uh, here are 
uh, image pole figures, and uh, here uh, are Kenne average misorientations. Uh, we can, based on the value in, on, in this table, we can observe that there is a, a decrease on local misorientation from microstructure E to uh, B and C. And uh, there is no significant change between uh, B and C. So uh, tampering uh, seems to, to have lead to a slight decrease of um, local misorientation. And uh, here we can show that there is no change on the misorientation angle of the Martin side matrix. And uh, uh, the aspect uh, ratio of uh, Martin side block are uh, all saying uh, the, the same. So to summarize in this first part, uh, uh, you may uh, now know that uh, we, are talking, we are talking about three uh, microstructures, A, uh, which is the reference, B and C, which have been obtained by realizing uh, uh, tampering on the reference microstructure. Uh, second point is that uh, Tempering has a lead to a, a changing on precipitation state. Uh, that is what we were expecting. And um, by changing the size and the entire carbide spacing. But uh, the main observation is that uh, the difference between entire carbide spacing in particular, between microstructure B and C, is very uh, uh, significant. And there, there are also a slight uh, decrease of uh, local misorientation. Now I'll talk about tensile and fracture properties. Uh, first uh, of all, uh, tensile tests were, uh, uh, were realized based on the ISO standard at room temperature, and three specimens were broken uh, by um, microstructure. Uh, we can show that uh, there is a significant decrease on uh, strength and uh, B and C, uh, the difference on uh, Microsoft B and C is uh, not so uh, significant. So we wanted to, to, to explain this difference in terms of uh, the effect of tampering and uh, we show that uh, there is a significant decrease here and well, uh, fracture elongation slightly increased with tempering. We also uh, realized uh, instrument and chap impact tests uh, based on ISO standards also. And uh, three specimens uh, were broken uh, by microstructure. Tests were realized at room temperature. Mm. Uh, instrument and chap impact tests allow uh, analysis of the uh, crack in terms of uh, propagation area and uh, uh, initiation and propagation. Initiation is when the, the maximum uh, the load reaches in, until its maximum value, and the propagation is the second uh, second area. Uh, we can clearly identify this uh, uh, this area this area on uh, uh, fracture surface. So here is uh, uh, initiation, and uh, the rest is propagation. So here are uh, instrumented uh, curves for the three microstructure. Uh, we noticed a significant increase on uh, impact toughness uh, between E and B and um, by 35%. And uh, the impact toughness doesn't change a lot between uh, uh, B and C. And we were very surprised by this result because uh, precipitation state between B and C is, has changed a lot, as I previously mentioned. So uh, next to, to, at the end of this presentation, I will suggest uh, some um, uh, characterization in which we are working on to deeply understand that. So uh, if we focus on the propagation area, we can also observe that there is a slight changing of the slope of curves. And uh, we also focus on the contribution of uh, uh, initiation and propagation energy on uh, overall fracture energy. And globally, we can observe that for A, B, and C, uh, propagation energy contributes to more than 
more than 50% of the fracture energy. So if uh, perhaps we can um, suggest that if you want to increase uh, uh, fracture energy, it could be interesting to, to, to analyze, to deeply understand how microstructural effect is affect, uh, how uh, microstructural parameters affect uh, propagation energy. So here are uh, fracture analysis. Um, at macroscopic scale, uh, there is no difference. But uh, when we, um, uh, when we uh, observe at higher uh, magnification, uh, they are the, the, the uh, fracture surface of the tree. Uh, micro um, they are fracture surface, sorry, uh, for the tree microstructure. Uh, we can clearly observe that uh, there is a slight change on the dimple size, and uh, we have also identified a uh, uh, cement-tight uh, carbide inside the dimples. Uh, inside some dimples, there were uh, more than one carbide, but uh, that suggests uh, this uh, observation suggests that uh, cemented carbide uh, has lead, uh, has probably led to uh, uh, initiation uh, sites of a dimple uh, of a ductile uh, fracture, and we have also uh, uh, estimate the uh, dimple size for the tree microstructure, and here we present um, both uh, propagation energy, uh, mean dimple size, and intake about spacing, in order to show the effect of intake about spacing on uh, both those, uh, these uh, two uh, parameters. So we can uh, clearly show that between A and B, uh, there is a significant increase of uh, uh, both propagation energy and uh, mean dimple size. But here between uh, B and C, uh, we were supposed to, 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 to obtain uh, another significant increase, but uh, Probably uh, the tempering who has led to the realization of uh, uh, microstructural C uh, has also uh, allowed uh, precipitation of probably return austenite. And uh, this return austenite probably has uh, act in decreasing uh, propagation energy. Uh, we are still working uh, on that to to, to, to identify, uh, to determine uh, the difference in terms of um, return of stenite in these three microstructures. So uh, what we suggest uh, here is to emphasize that uh, increasing in intake about spacing uh, leads to an increase of the propagation energy because uh, when we increase intake of spacing, it gives time to material to, uh, to accumulate energy during uh, 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 dimper growth, so uh, on uh, ductile fracture. So now some conclusions. Uh, the first is about the effect of tempering on uh, tempered Martin cell microstructure. Uh, we have observed that it leads to uh, an increase of the carbide and uh, intake carbide spacing with a slight decrease of uh, uh, local misorientation inside Martin side matrix. And uh, the second point uh, here is about the effect of intake carbide spacing on fracture energy. And uh, we have uh, previously shown that uh, intake carbide spacing uh, uh, increase in intake about spacing uh, also uh, could lead to an increase of the impact toughness globally, but we are still working to understand why uh, the difference between uh, B and C is not so uh, significant as expected. And uh, yes, analysis are still performed. So here are some references that I have used to more understand uh, the results I just present, uh, thanks to a uh, French uh, agency uh, for the final report, and uh, thanks for listening. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Yep. Any questions, please? Yeah. Yeah, I understand that you have the in, uh, kind of a relation between the carbide uh, spacing and size with respect to the toughness and tensile pr property. Uh, but during your heat treatment or tempering, you also change the, the, the matrix uh, properties. Yeah, it's much softer and ductile. How do you exclude the effect of the matrix, the Martin side matrix? Here we are uh, working on um, the effect of microstructural constituent on the impact toughness. So of course, when we increase, uh, when we change the tempering temperature, we change also uh, matrix. But as I uh, um, we show here, sorry, there's there's no significant change on the. Uh, yeah. Okay. There's no significant change on the uh, Martin side matrix. Uh, uh, Misorientation angle of Martin side matrix are near the same for the true microstructure and Martin side block aspect uh, ratio doesn't also change a lot. So, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, it will be at the end of the session.